listening to Movie Reviews and More with Brian Sebastian, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hey there, this is Brian Sebastian. Welcome to Movie Reviews and More. Here we are in the month of November. Time is flying by really, really quickly. Thank you for everybody for tuning in, and we have a special show today. And I want to welcome back Soriana Kit. I'm so thankful that she's here. I don't know what to do when she's not here. <laughs> which I've is missed good. you too, Brian. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> which is good. <laughs> and I have to say this because I love saying this. All the way from Chicago, Linda Steele. And what I like to do is I like to have everybody introduce their own selves because you're used to doing this, and I think it's special that way. Okay. Tell us who you are, where you came from, and how you got into fitness. Great. Okay. So my name is Linda Steele, and I'm from Chicago. I actually do uh, own a gym in Chicago called Steele Training and Fitness, and I book out about 10 to 15 clients a day, uh, train them. Every hour, it's a different personality, so it's really exciting for me. And when I'm not doing my training and running my own gym, I'm a professional model. I model bikini, fitness, and fashion. I have a degree in the field from DePaul University. I hold nine different certifications, which qualifies me as an elite trainer. I am an uh, expert in nutrition, senior fitness, and exercise therapy. I'm sometimes co-host on UK Health Radio. I write articles for a couple of different magazines. So I'm super busy. Zoriana, you know what really got my attention? She loves going to the movies. How great. Yeah, she has her own rating <laughs> system of a barbell system, <laughs> which I thought was pretty cool. So the more barbells, the, uh, the, the better, better the film. What's the limit? Five barbells? Four. Four. I wish there were five because sometimes it's hard to, to you know, qualify one as, you know, two and a half, three or four. Uh, I wish there were five, but there just, there wasn't enough room for five. So we had to go with four. Do you give <laughs> half barbells? Yes. You do. Mm-hmm. So what's a four barbell movie for you? For me, uh, Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like about Thor? Have you watched the other Thors and the oh, other yeah. Avenger movies? All of them. All of them. I love all of them. Uh, what did I like most about it? You know, it, he is just fun and funny. Um, and he's sarcastic. And he, I feel like, like we're related. You know, when you can actually relate to the characters, I- even though he's an Avenger, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's just fun and funny and uh, always exciting. The movies are always great, every one of them. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, so if you could give more barbells to that one, I think you probably would. I probably you? would. Yeah. I probably would. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, are you familiar with the Marvel universe in general? Have you always been into that universe, or is it just since these movies have been coming out that you kind of got into them? You know, I would say even when I was a kid, you know, the comic books and so forth, I always, you know, kind of, you know, took a look. Uh, so, I, I was always kind of into all of the characters. Do they somehow equate? something to you that you take into your job every day I mean is it is it about the strength that they represent uh, because you stand for strength yeah. in your day-to-day job yeah um, or is it the, the their morals or villains versus uh, you know good versus bad is that all kind of all of it all of it I you know I, I, I hate to even admit it but I have a, a thing for revenge and I feel like <laughs> I think we all do deep down. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, uh, you know, I feel like every one of them has revenge in it. And the bad guy always gets what he has coming. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's I, I, funny. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. There's a lot of bad guys out there that I think we'd want to see them get their yeah. comeuppance, right? Yeah. Right. Especially in this day and age, there's a lot of people that were like, yeah. "All right, the, your your time's up." But come <laughs> on, when's that comeuppance coming? It really it one of really the is. one of the uh, most valuable lessons that one of my very good friends taught me was to just have patience. Karma usually does its job, so I am not a patient person. I want to see right away, you know, karma do its job. But I've learned over the years that if you wait long enough and you just sit back and keep your mouth shut. Everything just gets taken care of all by itself. Yeah, being patient is really, really difficult. Mm-hmm. It is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially in this Instagram world of, you know, everything is Snapchat, where everything is instant. To actually sit back and be patient and let things unfold. Being passive is not what what our world uh, is like these days. Everyone yeah. has to be constantly doing something. Right, right. Now, I've always wondered about somebody who trains, like you said, you, you train 15, up to 15 clients a day. When you train them, 
do you consider that your workout as well or do you have to do your own workouts outside of that because i figured oh great wow you're if you're training that much that many people then you you're probably working out yourself as I'm, well i'm really not you know i'm i will get their weights for them and put them back on the racks uh, for the most part, but you don't see me working out next to them. I'm usually really careful about watching them do correct form. So I don't really get my workouts in. And so I do have to schedule out my own workouts. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, you know, when I hear somebody say, Oh my gosh, I wish I had time to work out. I just don't have time. I understand because I'm in the building all day long. And sometimes I don't have time for my own workouts. So what I've had to start doing was I look at my schedule at the beginning of the week, and if I see a window of about two hours, I'll block it out and make sure that nobody gets in during that time. Mm. And I just make sure that that's when I set time aside for my workouts. But don't you ever feel like sometimes if, if I write all day long for work, the last thing I want to do is go home and write for pleasure or write something yes. uh, on, on the side. So if you're there all day, I'm sure the last thing you want to do is then do it yourself yes uh, I, I open my gym at five o'clock in the morning and if I know that I don't have clients in the morning I'll make sure I get my workout first thing this way nothing comes in the way and I'm not too tired to do it I mean I'm tired because it's five o'clock in the morning yeah. but uh, but I know that it's you know that's my time and if it's not uh, I don't usually work out past three o'clock in the afternoon it has to be sometime before otherwise I just I'm too tired and I've been doing it all day long yeah you know I by that time I've had about nine clients I don't want to work out myself so yes you're right about that wow i'm interested that i don't know of another female gym owner how did that happen because i'm really happy to know one do you know of another one because i don't i don't in fact most of the uh professional fitness people who you might see they make their money off of sponsorships right. and um you know those those sponsor different you know protein supplements or you know mm -hmm. you know water or whatever and they make a lot of money that way uh, I'm one of the only people, in fact, I don't know another person who actually took their training career into um, owning a gym and continuing on with actual training people. I have clients, I have some of the same clients that I've had since I first started. And that was about 13, 14 years ago. And they, I still have them. <laughs> they, wow, that says a lot about your regimen, though. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like all of them look like fitness models by any means. Um, they, but they come to me because they need, um, they need the knowledge. They need the, I hold them accountable. They need the accountability. And sometimes they just want someone else to think for them. You know, they just want to show up. They don't want to think about how much weight am I supposed to curl or what should I do next. They want to come in. They want to. They come in for the conversation. Some sometimes we don't even lift a weight. I'll have somebody come in. They'll be having a terrible day, whether it be something happened at work or with their family, and they'll sit down on the bench, dressed and ready to go, and we won't lift one weight. We'll just sit and talk the whole hour. I think that's great. That's <laughs> because it's also therapy. I it mean. is. It is. So um, I, you know, I don't. I rarely. I shouldn't say I don't ever. I don't like to say never or always, but I rarely have to cancel on a client. I can't remember the last time I called in sick, and um, I'm, you know, they can count on me, so they know I'll, I'll be there for them. Was it hard to get become an owner of that gym? Because you used to have two. I used to have two, and it, it just took up way too much of my time, and I didn't feel like I could give everybody the, enough attention. Uh, so when I, when I first became a trainer, I was at a major uh, chain in Chicago, and I built up a huge clientele. I mean, I had a three-month waiting list to even get on my schedule. And um, I'm not going to mention names, but I realized that I could actually uh, ho make a better bottom dollar than the company I was working for. And I just decided to take a chance. I went off on my own, and all of my clients followed me, all but one. And it wasn't because that one didn't like me. It was because there was it, it was a convenient thing for her. She worked literally across the street from the gym that I was leaving. So she wasn't able, it just wasn't convenient. She couldn't get to work on, on time had she come with me. So uh, I had, my gosh, I don't remember if it was like 60, 70 clients follow me. Wow, at, that's uh, impressive. Uh, yeah, so I went to this other gym and I leased space um, from their gym for about two years until I got everything together so that I could actually open up my own facility. And um, I looked around a couple different places, decided about how big I wanted the gym to be. And um, I just went from there. I you know, contacted a company to purchase equipment and leased, uh, signed a five-year lease 
I just re-signed with them. And uh, again, my clients all followed me. You know, they followed me wherever I went. They, Good they for were, you. yeah. What's the biggest challenge in being a business owner at the same time as also being an artist to a certain degree? Because I lifting weights and working out, your uh, modeling that's uh, that's a very artistic, creative side, one brain, one part of the brain. But being a business owner and taking care of all the logistics and the finances, that's another part of the brain. And not everyone is using both on their day-to-day -day right. jobs. Well, I will tell you what makes it easy. Uh, because my schedule is so regimented, it makes it, makes it very easy. I know exactly what I have to bring to eat every day. I know exactly what time I'm starting. I know what my schedule is like. I know the window of opportunity that I have to do things like run payroll, uh, you know, pay the bills, um, you know, uh, delegate. I've just, I, I would say the hardest thing for me is to delegate. And uh, for one, I have this, this way of, you know, I know that if I want it done right, I'm gonna have to do it myself. But I have a great staff right now, and uh, I'm getting a lot better at delegating. What, what I've recently done was I actually spent time to get processes in place so that they can actually take over exactly what I want them to do. Mm. And they've been with me long enough to know that I don't cut corners, I want everything done you know, a certain way, and they're just, they're good. The staff I have right now is awesome. I hope nobody ever leaves me. <laughs> you know, the, again, going back to the basics, the thing I really like this, with all that going on, so Rihanna, she has time to go to the movies. And she I actually know. gets dressed up to go to the movies. <laughs> Would you say you have a shoe fetish? Yes. Did you see my shoe room? Uh, I didn't get a chance to see that, but I love the boots. Brian, oh my gosh. Wait, do you see my shoe? I'm going to show you my shoe room before we leave. Okay. But the thing, Zoriana, <laughs> was she gets dressed up and she goes to iPix yes. and watches films. I mean, that's not easy. I don't know of another fitness, but I usually drag my friends to go to the stuff that are doing. Like, you want to see what we do? It's not easy doing what we do right. when we have to see a screening every night or sometimes three, three times a day. Do you know, I, um, it forces me to sit and get my mind off of things. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons that I love it. And, and I have to, sometimes I have to force myself because I have so much going on up here, so much going on at all times. And I don't, I feel like I, I'll forget something. If I don't constantly have it all going on up there, I'm gonna forget something and something's gonna be left behind. So uh, it actually does force me to sit, relax, take my mind off Absolutely. of everything. For me, it's funny, it's kind of the opposite. I, uh, I work out in the mornings, I, I run, I also have a gym membership for rainy days, but in my house I also have an elliptical trainer. And there are some days where, whether it's with the kids and their schedule, that I can't make my early morning group runs, so that means I have to do the elliptical. And to me, you know, I, I love the outdoor portion mm -hmm. of the fitness, but when I have to be on that elliptical trainer, I dread, and I it's such a chore to go on there. So I like to watch movies when I'm on it because to me, it passes the time. Yes. Because without it, it's just, I'm looking at the clock oh, and yeah. the hour takes forever. And then if I'm watching, like I binged watched the entire Stranger Things season two on <laughs> the elliptical trainer over the course of a few days because then I go over an hour. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, it's just I just wanna watch another episode. I'll just continue running on the elliptical right. trainer. <laughs> right, you almost have to. I I get so bored on cardio, so I put my good music on and I just I just get in, into it with my music. I I don't watch movies, but I do my music. But I always have the doors open at my gym. Same thing. I like the outdoor feel. Yeah. But I don't run outside. I'm I'm glued to inside the building. For your job, mm -hmm. it's your business. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But I can't work out at home I, I, because again, I'll be like, oh, the laundry. Oh, you know, I have to empty the dishwasher. I'll be in the middle of <laughs> lifting. I'm like, oh, I have to go do something. Yes. Yes. So I don't but work out. You kind of talked about when I go to the movies, I think about, okay, what else uh, do I have to do? But it gives my chance of body a chance to relax, but I'm still thinking. So I think we. It's because you sit down ways. finally. Like you're forced to sit down. Yeah. Because if I wasn't forced to sit down, I'd be moving, getting up, doing something, um, changing course, walking this way, then going, oh, wait, I got to go this yes. way. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly so right. So I think step number one in the process is to actually sit down, mm -hmm. and then everything else starts to follow. And then once the movie starts, you're right. Fully and into I it. pick. Have you been to I pick? Yes. Oh my. She went to she went to the landmark theater oh. here, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And th I mean, the one that I go to back in Chicago, it's actually in South Barrington. They treat me like royalty there. And you know, I watch. I, I I'm I'm a good 
observer and I watch and they really treat everybody amazing. They See, really, that's good. really do. Yeah, it's not just me. It's everybody. But um, I mean, there's the pillows and the blankets and, you know, the server comes and, you know, your dinner. And if you drink, they bring you your drinks. I, you can't beat it. I mean, you know, the comfortable recliner. Sometimes I go to the movies and I'm ashamed to say I fall asleep. I'm so <laughs> overworked that I it, it, ha- it happens. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I think that's also a sign of the times of uh, where the movie business is is heading or 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 if it's reactionary to where we are, which is anyone can watch a movie anywhere at this point. Yeah. You know, so people don't want to leave their house. They can watch it on their TV. They can watch it on their computer, mm-hmm. on their laptop, on their iPad. So to really get people out, you you want to create that same sort of living room experience for them with yes. the pillows and the blankets yes. and a wine and all that stuff. It's it's for some people it's no longer just going to a, a movie theater with rows upon rows. The floors are sticky with right. spilt diet like spilt <laughs> coke, you know, and the crinkling of all that. You know, you just yeah. you, people want a more upscale experience because they have created that for themselves at home. Yes. And so the theaters have to follow in that regard now too. I agree. I agree. So yes, they're they're all very nice because they have to treat everybody like one hundred percent royalty or else they won't get returning yep. customers. You're right. You're right. And I love going out. I love getting dressed up and going out. I mean I'm in gym shoes every day all day. I'm you know, my workout attire is awesome. Uh, but I want to throw a pair of heels on and look <laughs> sexy. I don't want to just be in gym clothes all day, you know, every single day. But you do, a, you do a good job of that, obviously, and your fans love that. Yeah, yeah, they do. My fans are so supportive. Oh, my gosh. You know, when I first started in social media, I've only been on social media a couple years. I dug my heels in. I didn't want to believe that this is where the industry was headed. Right. I was going to be in the gym, and I was going to train people, and that was what I was going to do. But the industry changed it, kind of took a turn and fitness people had to be on social media so there I went on social media about two years ago and um, it's really I I got a piece of advice from somebody uh, who was in social media and she told me don't respond to anybody you need to come across as being a snob and you know being so important (laughs) in this and that and I thought but that's not me I don't I don't want to be that person I'm not a snob and I want to be friendly with these people you know I have developed some great relationships with my fans I've never met most of them I mean I've met a handful of them who actually take the time to come to my gym they fly into Chicago for meetings or whatever they come to the gym or they I seen them out and um, I really like them I mean I feel like I have a, a relationship with a lot of them even if I see their names or even their call names on you know from Twitter or, or whatever I, I know who they are and I've I've developed relationships with them it's just funny it's like way back in the day, way back in the day where we had pen pals and we would write letters to each other <laughs> yeah. you know, yes. from like across the world yeah. and it would take weeks to get there. Well, now it's so much faster. So you can actually do the same type of thing, but it's, it's just, it's fun. They're, they're really great people. What type of um, charities or causes are you passionate? I imagine um, you're around different people who have different uh, issues and different um, things that they're fighting for or worried about that you must be exposed to so many different uh, types of things that then you all of a sudden start feeling passionate about yeah. and want to champion. You know, um, recently I just I was just introduced to a charity that, I, that I'm involved in, but prior to this one, I would kind of go into whatever family issues, like for instance, the American Heart Association, I used to donate to them, I was big on that. Uh, my father had some heart issues. Uh, the American um, Cancer Society uh, because I had that in my family and so I would donate to those types of um, um, institutions but I didn't you know you you always wonder where's the money actually going you know is it actually going to Mm -hmm. research is it going to the right thing I mean I know I'm paying salaries because they're you know they have to they have the administrative part of it too and I get that but I recently came across um, within the last several years actually it's a Roman Catholic institution and it was created for the care of the elderly and uh, it's called Little Sisters it's St. Joe's Little Sisters and they have about 31 different places around the world and uh, they're not funded they're not state funded and they're not funded by the archdiocese they are strictly funded by benefactors uh, volunteers uh, people who are um, who donate a bunch of money for for their cause uh, they run a beautiful institution. There's one near my home, 
and uh, they have several different tiers. They have uh, apartments for you know people who can't really afford uh, to live uh, on their own or in you know like a you know, assisted living. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so they have apartments, and then they have an, a second tier, which is more assisted living, and then they have the um, uh, the nursing home mm-hmm. type. And when I I went to visit this place for the very first time, and I could not believe how well kept it was. And it was early in the morning; it was about 9 a.m. And I went into the nursing home part of it, and first of all, it smelled so fresh and clean, yeah. I couldn't believe it. I didn't even realize I was in a nursing home. And as I walked past every room, every single elderly person who was there, they were sitting up in their chair and the women had their makeup on and their hair done and they were just watching TV and the men were decked out and everybody was clean and everybody looked happy. And the nuns, it's, it's run by nuns and by volunteers. So what differentiates it from the other nursing homes that I've seen is that everybody who's there wants to be there. Mm-hmm. They're not there because they have to be there. They're not paid by the state. No one's mad because they're not making enough money. Everybody there wants to be there. I can't even go, I can't even tell you the amount of care that these people get. And they have activities, they have um, chocolate martini day. They wow. have, <laughs> <laughs> oh they have wine tasting parties. I mean, it's Catholic. They yeah. have wine tasting parties. <laughs> uh, the place is, uh, is beautiful the way they decorate it for the holidays. Right now, if you went into it, you would look like you were in, in a, going into an Amlings. I don't know if you're familiar with Amlings uh-huh, Nursery, yeah. uh, how they it's beautiful around the harvest season and around the Christmas season. It's gorgeous. What Everything made you, f- how, how did you find them? Did you have a personal connection to that? I did. I, I actually have two clients who uh, have volunteered there for one of them. I think it's like 27, 28 years and the other one, 35 years. Wow. They've been volunteering their time there and donating a ton of money. And That's they, great. yeah, so they told me about it, and I couldn't help but get involved when they were selling raffle tickets and and so forth. I couldn't help but get involved. I donated um, not just money, but uh, personal training sessions and gym memberships and things like that. So you know what I like about that? Your your clients have become good friends. Yeah, and very very loyal. That's unusual. Yeah, but good. Yeah, I you can't help it. You spend more time with your clients when you do what I do than you do with your own family members. I know mm-hmm. I know more about my clients. I know things I don't want to know. <laughs> I train <laughs> I train some family members who I have secrets about and I don't I just stand there. I can And they're shot. about each other, yeah. right? So, <laughs> so I can't I, <laughs> I'm like, don't tell me this. I have, to, be <laughs> I have to see your husband next. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh tell God. us something that your fans don't know about you. Oh, gosh. That they would find interesting. I don't really keep secrets. I don't know anything they don't know about me. Uh, the, the type of music you listen to. They know that even. Okay. I love Megan Trainer right now. I can't get enough of her. Michael Jackson all the time. Pitbull. I love 70s music. I think my fans know all of that. Interesting. So I can't think of, of anything they might not know. They know the kind of car I drive. Oh, some of the, I just got a little tip from somebody. Um, if I've had a couple of drinks in me, I might take my shoes off and show how I could do hang loose with my toes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That's funny. I can actually do that. And it actually looks like hang loose with my toes. That's funny. Yeah. But you have to get a couple of pops in me. Like, well, that's why there's vodka it. here. <laughs> right. Provincial. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, Rihanna, where have you been lately? Um, I just came back from Amsterdam. I uh, work at Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. So we're an uh, anti-poaching, nonprofit o- ocean conservation society. And we have a navy of about a dozen ships around the world all engaged in defending, conserving, and protecting our ocean. And a lot of the issues with the oceans has to do with overfishing, illegal fishing. We're just depleting our oceans. And um, I went to Amsterdam where uh, the... Uh, the, the headquarters? headquarters, the global headquarters. The U.S. headquarters are based here in L.A. and Burbank. But I went to the global headquarters in Amsterdam, and um, that was just a, an amazing experience because Amsterdam is completely different from our life here. Yeah. Uh, the, the houses are all these stacked houses that yeah. are tall with no elevators, but just these winding stairs. Very Every, tiny, small. Everyone is fit. No they one drives. They all bike. Yeah. There's not a single fat person. Yeah. Was there still Amsterdam. all those bikes chained to the... Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. And the global headquarters is uh, is in a 
a two-story building where the bottom floor is our the east door so uh, 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 you can just go right off the street and shop for all that amazing eco-friendly uh, sea shepherd clothing um, and the second level is our are the offices so it was uh, it was it was great to have some face time with uh, everybody uh, on that side of the world and yeah. and uh, just see how the other half lives what did they think about you coming over well, so they've been here over here before. Okay. So yeah, but you went to visit them this time. Yeah. Well, it was it was really nice. I'm I uh, you know I'm like you guys have a dishwasher in your kitchen. We don't. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's things we take funny. for granted. Yeah, those those <laughs> kinds of little things. But we also discussed a lot of the different campaigns that we have going on, um, and the campaigns that we want to start in the new year. We're working to have a shark campaign in the in the new year. Sharks are one of my favorite favorite fishes hammerheads especially i'm so in love with them I, I just love the electrical field that sharks have you know it's they're such special creatures and they're also you know the top predator of the ocean and if you if you kill them if you cut their fins off for shark fin soup which is completely ridiculous and 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 a, a really ill advised status symbol in in asian countries but you know if you remove the top predator then it it takes away it breaks the the link in the chain and it leaves other invasive species to come in and sharks being the top predator they keep the oceans clean because they prey on the sick they prey on uh, the weak and so they regulate the ocean because they prey on those so they keep the oceans healthy and uh, and we need that we need them to continue to do that and a lot of people are afraid of sharks sharks get, get a bad rap i can't tell you how much damage jaws still wreaks oh, havoc yeah. on on people you know decades later that movie was not a uh, a friend to the to the oceans but uh um so we definitely want to start a shark campaign to continue to fight for for sharks and uh, turtles also turtle poaching is is has been a big issue um et, uh, poaching their eggs has been a big issue and uh and one of the things that you know here in the u.s we don't think about which has been really interesting something that i started thinking about uh, since i started working at sea shepherd is light pollution we all talk about pollution yeah. but light pollution is a whole other issue and that's for example in florida uh, when all those mcmansions are on the beach they all you know have beautiful lighting mm, right and that contributes to light pollution because when turtles hatch the babies uh, rely on the moon to guide them into the ocean because oh. they're born and they have to make a beeline for the ocean right. to swim and if they hatch and there's light pollution they don't know what's the moon they don't know is the moon up there is the moon over there right. is the moon over there and we had a campaign where uh, our ground uh, volunteers followed six baby hatchlings into a parking lot because it was lit up and they were That's trying to get to the ocean and they ended up in a parking lot where they could have gotten run over. So light pollution is something that's uh, a problem in developed urban cities. So something to think about if you're, you know, if you have a beach house, if you if you live in an you area know, like I'll, that. I'll bet that if, uh, I mean, how do you spread the word? Because I'm sure people don't know that. Yeah. They would happily turn their lights off. Exactly. If and the knew. website? Exactly. Well, seashepherd.org is our, our website. And um, we, um, we do have turtle campaigns and combating light pollution in the United States in those areas where turtles do come on the beach and lay eggs is something that we do. But yes, it's not something that's talked about much and, and it is a very important thing to address and an easy one yeah. to fix. Oh, an for sure. easy one to fix. Yeah, it's a matter of getting the word out. Yeah. And Linda, give you a website also. My website is Linda Steele Hot Bod. Dot com. So, Ariana, talk about uh, the campaign when um, the ships went to Puerto Rico. Oh, yes. Um, so, uh, as an ocean conservation society, we do engage in protecting marine life. But when Hurricane Irma and Maria hit, we decided that we were going to slightly alter our, 
our uh, campaign and visit the islands that are in need and give them tarps and water and pet food. I mean, you know, people tend to abandon the animals or they're the, or they kind of run into the forest and then they come out and there's nothing there. So, you know, you, you we'll never abandon the animals no matter where we go. Um, we were helping schools come back to life and and things like that. We're, we we did all the all the islands and uh, we're planning to go back in the new year and hit some of the islands that we haven't gone to yet. Yeah. Uh, Puerto Rico yeah. will likely be one of them, which we're we're very very excited about. And I think in this day and age, it, you have to think globally. So if you're conserving. Uh, marine wildlife in the ocean you you can't help but think of the islands in the ocean and those islands are populated by people and when you know when you when you are on a flat land with not a lot of protection and a hurricane hits the devastation mm. is terrible terrible there a lot of people in Puerto Rico st are still without power yeah 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 I, I can't imagine I mean you can't refrigerate your food no you uh, you know I can't imagine having to live like for so long. That's unbelievable. It's it's going to be a long process to to get everyone back on track. Yeah. Talk yeah. about the the documentary. Oh gosh. Turn turn Linda onto it. <laughs> Wait, which documentary right uh, now? Was it Paul Mitchell? Was, uh, oh, Good Fortune. Yeah, one of our um, one of We're our. going to give you a homework assignment. Linda. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, our ships are named after a lot of our donors. So we have a ship called the Bob Barker. Um, we have a ship called the Martin Sheen. We have the Martin Sheen. We have the Bridget Bardot. We have the Sam Simon, um, and Sam Simon is the one of the found. Uh, he founded the Simpsons, one of the Simpsons founders. Oh, founder. okay. Uh, we have the Steve Irwin, and we have um, we have the John Paul DeJoria, and he is responsible for the John Paul Mitchell hair care products okay. and the tequila Patron. Okay. And uh, he, coincidentally, he loves sharks as well. So maybe we'll work with him on that shark campaign. He's a big fan of sharks. So we have a ship called the John Paul DeJoria. And um, uh, uh, John Paul had a documentary that came out earlier this year called Good Fortune. And it was uh, all about how he grew up in, you know, L.A. and the foster care system. And, and he was very poor. And then he got into some gang members. And it just, you know, things weren't going great. But he turned his life around, became a billionaire, and just started giving away his fortune. And he donates to so many causes including Sea Shepherd obviously we have a ship named after him but one of my favorite phrases that he says is uh, in the end it'll all be okay and if it's and if it's not okay it's not the end oh isn't that nice and I love that definitely my mantra because that uh, it's it's true if it's not okay it means it's not the right, end right and uh, I um you know, I, I was at a public place uh, not too long ago, and I was using the bathroom, and a woman came in, and she ran into the bathroom, and she went up against the wall, and she was trying to dial, and she couldn't, and she burst into tears, and she just started to cry. And I don't know what her name was. I don't know why she was crying. I don't know what the issue was, but she was clearly having a bad day, and she just ran into that bathroom for some type of escape. And I saw her, and I, I kneeled down next to her, and I just took her hand, and I said, I literally said that. I said, I, I know it's, obviously it's really tough for you right now, but please believe me when I say, in the end, it's going to be okay. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. And mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you right now for you how you're feeling. I don't know what you're, what you're going through, but it's not the end. The and I promise you. It will be okay. And she just, she didn't even talk to me. She just continued to sob, but she did listen to me because there was no one else in there. And, uh, and then I left. And I oh. just, I was, I just, she needed to hear that. And I felt like if the situation was reversed and if it was me and you're in a public bathroom and people are coming and going, yeah. you would, I just, you can't just wash your hands and pretend that there's like not a person sitting right. there crying. Right. You know? So wow. I just wanted to let her know that whatever it was, mm -hmm. it was it, this too shall pass. Yeah, you know? yeah. One of the great things about documentaries, obviously, too, you know, what a great title, Good Fortune. 
What have you been seeing movie wise? And movie releases coming up. It's that time mm, of year for yeah. us, right? I, I went to see a film over the weekend that hasn't come out yet. It's a new Denzel Washington film called Roman Esquire. Roman Israel Esquire. Esquire. It's a mouthful of a of a <laughs> of a name. Um, it's it's a fictional character. It comes out November seventeenth. And Denzel plays an attorney who is on the spectrum, and he uh, he's got you know. It, 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 it's never said what he has. You can, might say it's a form of Asperger's or something like that, but he's on the spectrum in some capacity. So he's one of those attorneys that you kind of keep in the back room because he knows every law, he knows every rule book, he knows which, which page it's on. But if you force him to go to court and be on stage, he's not going to do a good job. Right. That's not his forte. I saw previews for this. Yeah. I've never seen a movie that I didn't love him in. Exactly. So therefore you won't be disappointed right. because it, it's it's an amazing performance. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Linda, when you're seeing trailers, because a lot of times our screenings just start. So unless I'm going to pay to see a movie to catch up on something, I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. Even though we'll probably see it one way or another and then we may do interviews or whatever. What are you seeing when you go to the movies on those trailers? What gets your attention? Uh, you know, anything action. I love action. And, you know, when um, they're, they're pretty smart. When you go to see an action movie, they realize you like action movies, so they go ahead and promote all of the other action movies that are about to come out. It, just like if you go to see a scary movie, they're going to promote all the scary movies yes. coming out. Yeah. So yep. it just so happens that I, uh, I, I get a lot of the same genre of what I'm used to seeing. Uh, so I see a lot of the action ones coming out. I see a lot of the military type movies coming out. Uh, I just recently saw American Assassin. Uh, oh, what a great film! Oh my gosh! Amazing. Did that just like turn you on when you saw that? Yes. Did you want to pick up a gun? Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. And uh, what what was another one? Uh, American Made mm -hmm. was an amazing movie, and. Um, Hitman's Bodyguard. I mean, yeah, all they of were them. All good. They all came out at once, and it just so happens most of my um, fans know this that my circle uh, is a lot of military people, uh, ex, you know, CIA, um, drill sergeants, uh, current people who are currently in the military, veterans, and so I always get one of my very good friends to come with me to see these movies, good. and I'm always like, is that real? Did that really happen? Does that come? And <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> my poor friends who come to see the movies with me because I, wa I always want the details. And um, but yeah, those are the movies that really interest me. As a as a Marvel fan, did you see the Spider Man movie that yeah. came out in the summer? Yeah, I s I watched that on the plane when I was coming back from Amsterdam. But you know, when you're on a nine hour flight or a ten hour flight, you can really cram a lot of films in oh, that yeah. you hadn't seen. And so uh, I did see Wonder Woman in the summer, which I loved, loved. loved uh, but I didn't get a chance to see Spider Man. So I, watching it, I I love. My the fi my favorite of a of a comic book film is always the origin story, always the very mm. first one that establishes how they've come to be. Yeah, and so I really enjoyed this one because just seeing the kid just come into his own and get his new yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why my favorite. Iron Man will always be the first the one. The first one. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Even though full disclosure, I played a. You know, I played myself in it. I was a journalist. I was literally Zoriana in there. And, I thought that uh, was pretty cool. And and did and, you know that Linda? She played no. herself in it. But see, the thing is, I always forget that. So when I tell people that my favorite one was the first one, people are like, "Yeah, because you're in it." But I'm just like, "No, that's no, not the reason." It's not the reason. I love the origin. I of agree. It all. I agree. It's so hard when they when they come out with the second or the third one. It's so hard to beat the first one. Yes, it, oh, it because is. the discovery of their powers is yeah. already. It's it's done. So right. now they're just on an adventure fighting. Well, it's not just, but you know they're established and they're you're expanding that universe as opposed to giving birth to it. And there's something about giving birth to the universe right. that's so just arresting if it's done right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Tossing out a few movies. When you think of the movie Glory with Denzel Washington, what comes to mind? Either one of you. Refresh my memory. Uh, the first black regiment coming out of Boston. And they went to go fight in the South. First time they got the uniforms and pick up guns heading into the South. Listen, it's been a while since I've seen that film. And I lived in Canada when I saw it. So the issues 
there are definitely, definitely not the different. issues that are here. Yeah. But I'm sure if I were to rewatch it, I would probably find it to be very timely. Yes, exactly. Yeah. What got you into watching films? Was it something you grew up on that just did it for you? Will you continually go to the movies, which I think is great? No. Uh, I, I, I went to movies uh, as a kid, but what did it for me was a very good friend of mine, my mentor, actually, who saw the type of person I was that I literally could not sit down and stop doing something. I, every ah, minute of my day had to have a purpose. I was uh, neurotic. I have OCD. I can't sit still. And uh, he actually forced me to sit and watch a movie. And the very first time I watched a movie with him, it was at my house. And I, <laughs> this is a true story. We put the movie on, and I went and I took a drawer out of my kitchen. You know, everybody has a junk drawer. I took the junk drawer out of my kitchen. I sat it on my lap, and I was going to organize it while he watched the movie. I do stuff like that. And he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I have to do something. I can't just sit here the whole time and watch a movie. He said, that's the whole point, so that you could just sit here and do nothing. And it was like, it, I felt like I was going crazy, like crawling out of my skin. Because you like, could be doing different things. Yes, See, all of I the things I should do be doing. I can't do that with movies. I can't, because if my mind <laughs> wanders, let's say I'm on the elliptical, and uh, and my mind wanders, I need to stop and rewind yes. and catch well, up because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. It was anything. a learning process, and you're yeah. absolutely right. And then once I learned, it's okay to not do something for two hours straight. It's exactly. okay yeah. to relax. It's actually See really that future healthy. fitness people? Listen to Linda. It's yeah. okay to go to the movies and not think about what yes. you're not eating or meal prep. Yeah. It's okay. You have to. There. That's called a balance. But by the way, if... If somebody feels that they need to do something, um, you can always choose a movie that's a documentary or yes. a foreign yes. film. Because there are some days where I feel like, oh, I feel like oh, I'm, I, I'm, my mind's not working out. My body is, but my mind isn't. So I'll choose to watch a documentary you to can educate mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. And uh, and I mean, documentaries are still my favorite. I types love of documentaries. Movies. Yeah. Because Do I, I love history movies. Yeah. I love. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like I'm doing two things at once. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Well, speaking of documentary TV movies, um, the one I really liked lately on PBS was the Ken Burns documentary on the Vietnam War. I love the history of what they were talking about. The 10-part series is still on. You could still catch up with that. Um, I, I saw Mr. Dynamite, Alex Gibney. He did a, a documentary on James Brown, which is on Netflix. How is that? It's I really love good. Alex it's Gibney. It's really good. And, he, you know, we, in case you don't know, she does a lot of interviews, celebrity interviews, which is good, but she doesn't talk about it. I don't know why, but she doesn't. <laughs> She's but humbling. The, yeah. But the thing is, it's a, it's a really good documentary, and it just went to Netflix. And I'm like, well, let me just check this out. And I'm like, oh, the first thing I'm looking at, who directed it? Because I need to know. And I'm like, wow, this is really good. It's almost just as good as the feature film that was produced by Mick Jagger. Really, mm -hmm. really good. I, su I would suggest that because I've been catching up on a lot of the TV stuff lately. And obviously, you know, you may not be a TV watcher, but at least you go to the movies, mm -hmm. which my hat goes off to you because I keep telling people in fitness, go to the movies take that break go out and support the arts because you know what they all want to be in the movies don't they yeah yeah they do yeah no it's it's really it's a shame that i don't see people out more often you know um and you're in chicago you get dressed up and go out yeah I, of course so there's no excuse no i know no it's just it's just something fun to do i i can't imagine my life without movies i don't i don't get to watch a lot of tv again my time is very limited there are nights i don't get home from work till 9 10 o'clock p.m uh, and, you know, I also really enjoy watching hockey. And mm. so I have to make a decision. I either get to watch a hockey game or I get to watch TV. So if the Blackhawks are playing, I'm, I'm watching hockey. <laughs> well, there's a good documentary on Netflix <laughs> called, um, the, it's called the, uh, the Guardians of Ice, oh. which is really good on fighting in hockey, concussions in hockey. Mm. Okay. Uh, really good. And, again, I said, you know, as Oriana knows, the balance of working on TV and then watching feature films and then going out to do the interviews, our time is kind of like your time. Mm -hmm. Because if we watch, we have to watch three to five films in different locations and then on weekends when we're not traveling, going to do junkets, which is, when I think back to that, how did we do it? 
I'm not even married, and that was tough doing that. I think when you're young, you can afford to, you know, eat a little bit of worse food and have a little less sleep. And I right. think the older you get, you just, just, you just adjust your lifestyles. <laughs> Pretty soon, I'll be in Chicago in that nice home that smells nice, <laughs> run, <laughs> run by nuns. Yeah. <laughs> I want to. Yes. Is it too early for me to get on the wait exactly. list? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Maybe I should put my name on there. Three too. meals a day. <laughs> That's wine tasting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to be 80 or 90 years old and tasting right. wine, right? They have a coffee shop there. They have an ice cream parlor. Please. I, I want to be there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know what? Let's talk about some of the movies coming up because we're almost in the oh, month of yes. December. Yes, yes. Tomorrow you know, I'm seeing. The I'm Darkest s- Hour? Yes. I, how did you how know, did I know that? that? I'm Brian Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, um, I've really been getting into, I know you, you said you enjoy historical things. This is a biopic on Winston Churchill. Now there's, obviously, the, he's been covered in films a lot of times. but There was like one or two other films earlier this year, but this is the yes, one with Gary Oldman. This is the one with Gary Oldman. Keep and your eye when you this. watch the trailer, you, you already, it's not Gary Oldman. I mean, you right. really have to look at that face and go, wait, there is Gary in there somewhere. I can see it. But mm-hmm. he is unrecognizable. And it's based on a book by one of his uh, personal secretaries. So I can't wait to see that. And so I'm going to the premiere tomorrow. I can't wait to check oh, it out. That'll be great. Yeah. Where's the premiere at? Um, it is on, uh, well, I better not say it in oh, case okay. yeah. people show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your fans. Yeah. 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 We'll keep that one under wraps <laughs> until after. Yeah. Well, you got the Justice League coming out uh, is the November 17th. Yeah, you know, I haven't gotten into the DC universe quite as much as the Marvel, but because I loved Wonder Woman so much, I just may get off my butt and go see it because I really like Gal Gadot and yeah. that character. Yeah, I'm rooting for her. Marvel fan, DC comic fan, does it matter to you? You know, I like both. Because uh, you're, to me, you're that power woman. That's yeah, why. yeah. I the Wonder Woman movie was amazing. Yeah, I mean, they cast that perfectly. I you, thought. Yeah, I mean, I'm waiting for Marvel to have that female empowerment movie. They have not yeah. done that. They've done nothing with Scarlett Johansson's character as the Black Widow, um, and she's awesome too. Yeah, I mean, they really have a lot. They could do a lot with that. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, as far as one versus the other, it's so hard to say. I like them for different reasons, but I I tend to to go more toward the Marvel, uh, you know, probably because of the powerful, the you know. Yeah, I mean, and we've known that universe, yeah, longer because they've they've done it better for for more years. And yeah, DC's right. l- playing catch up a little bit, but now they're starting to catch up mm-hmm. a little bit, and they are they're having huh, they're having uh, you know. Batman issues. I mean, uh-huh. how many times <laughs> has Batman been recast? But on the flip well, side, but I look at that as a Superman problem, also. Okay. Well, a, or a Hulk problem. How many yeah. Hulks have we had between Edward Norton and Eric Bana and now Mark Ruffalo? And Mark so, is great. I love Mark Ruffalo. So you know, yes, Superman's. Uh, uh, yeah, there can are. Can we can we put an end to it soon? I mean, can we just stop for a couple of years and not do another one of them? There's so well, many other characters. But look at how many Spider Mans we've had. We've had Tobey Maguire. Was, yeah. We've had Andrew Garfield, and now we have uh, this the the young kid. Yes, the, the young he, kid. He's also good. Yeah, he's he good. is. He is. Yeah. If you had a favorite celebrity to meet, who would it be and why? My gosh, you know, uh, I haven't thought about it. Lately, but at one point it was Bradley Cooper, just okay. because I just love his attitude. I love, you know, and it, and it goes back to the movie The Hangover. Oh, yeah. his yeah, whole yeah. disposition yeah. in that movie is so like, eh, you know, he. I just love how nonchalant he is. Uh, but I also love um, uh, Tony Stark, Iron Robert Man, Downey Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Yeah. Love him again because of his attitude. Uh, I love The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Love him. Uh, and the Wonder Woman character, I forget her name. Gal Gadot, yeah. Yes, love her. So I... They're all very strong, very uh, powerful, either characters or personalities. Right, every one of them. And I just, I, you just, like I said, you, when you watch them in movies, you just kind of feel a connection. And I, have, I feel like a connection with all of them. I, I've had a dream about them where I feel like we're friends. That, so I, yeah. I, I would love to meet anyone also, of Also, they all have their own presence. I, I think... Um, moviegoers naturally gravitate towards them and then when you see them on screen I think the camera naturally gravitates mm-hmm. toward their energy mm-hmm. yeah that's true uh, Linda talk about fashion how important is fashion to you and meal prep because obviously you stay in shape I obviously do. you're doing all, everything that you're doing but 
why is that important? You know, the meal prep, I'll start with meal prep. And because it, it because when you meal prep, you by default are going to look exactly the way you want to look uh, if you work mm-hmm. out the right way as well. And Wait, that so you didn't eat all that Halloween candy? Because I just went <laughs> right, that was the first thing I went to when I walked in the door. I didn't, oh, I did not. Man. Uh, so be the meal prep is so important, and um, when you look the way you want to look, you can fit into any fashion you want to fit into. I mean, really. But the meal prep, you know, um, again, because my schedule is so regimented, I, I, I have very little time um, for error. I have to make sure that I'm cooking and, I'm, and I have meals ready for myself. Which takes a lot of time. It really does. I take, uh, it, it, in fact, it, it's to a point now where I have somebody do my grocery shopping for me. Mm-hmm. I try to do my own meal prep, but if I can't, I have somebody cook for me. Uh, but I know, I know exactly how long I'm at work. I know exactly what meals I have to bring in every day. And uh, because I have back-to-back clients, I either am eating with a client while I'm training them, or I'm like taking four minutes in between clients to just, you know, shove a meal down my throat. I, I drink about two to three protein shakes a day because, again, I just don't have time to sit and cut up my food and sit and eat. So uh, the meal prep is important. When you're eating really clean and eating enough calories, your body is going to start falling into a, a position where you're going to be losing body fat just by accident, especially if you're getting your three workouts in a week. A balance of your cardiovascular activity and your weightlifting, it's really all important. And when your body f- settles into its essential body fat you and you're and you're actually shaped by muscle it looks great everything you put on looks amazing it really does so i tend to dress uh, a little bit more sexy than than most people women have uh, a tendency to dress for other women whereas i don't i dress for men if I'm not getting, if, if my date isn't getting high fives by total strangers, I've failed. <laughs> and I like that. That's funny. That's it's great. It's the truth. It's the truth. Uh, you want the man you're with. You want to make him proud. You want to make him That's be true. like, who I'm with. So uh, I I dress for men. Uh, I you know I don't like baggy things. I don't like you know things draped over me. I tend to wear very fitted clothing. Uh, I show a little bit more than some people, but it, it's what I'm comfortable in. It, it, I actually am comfortable with fitted clothes. I'm not comfortable in things baggy. Mm. So uh, I, just, I just dress that way. And confident women love it. They know exactly what I'm doing. They know exactly why I'm doing it. And uh, th- it, I feel like a lot of women, when they've, they've seen me wear my you know, six-inch heels and my fitted clothing and, and my low-cut, uh, they it, it gives them permission like oh we can wear that you know and, and isn't that empowerment it really is and you know if the stores are selling it people are buying it so when I have women who look at me like oh you know what are you wearing I, I want to remind them the stores are selling this stuff so someone's buying it so Good just point. because you not don't like you're like sitting it. at night with a sewing machine right. going, <laughs> I'm designing on my own. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that kind of time. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. So you know, uh, you know, and that's another way that I that I gauge if I've really nailed my outfit is the the number of dirty looks I get from other women. I'm like, okay, I got it. That's a shame because yeah, I mean so. because I I. I don't dress like that, and I do prefer something looser and baggier. But that's also because I'm I'm a mom, and I'm I'm always running a few beats behind, always trying to play catch up. I'm I just want to be comfortable and warm. And you look kind good of, when you get dressed up. I've seen your photos. Yeah, but 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 it's not like uh, that's to me that's a chore. Like that's like oh tonight I have to dress yeah. up. You know I yeah. think when your kids get older, things might change for you. You might you might turn you know back into you know wanting to make yourself look a certain way sure you know and not everybody feels this way but I feel this way that when I look really good I feel really good yeah my whole attitude changes if I if I feel you know good but I would never disparage like if I saw you on the street in your six inch heels and in you know everything that you're wearing I, I I wouldn't disparage you for I would you know, to each his own kind right. of thing. And God bless you for for loving yourself and, and working hard to have the body that you have t- and, and to show it off. Like, right, right. terrific. That's because it's, you're good-spirited. But it's a shame that, that you have to endure that from mm-hmm. other women because there's enough to endure anyways. I know, I know. You know, I, I try to turn it around, and I actually feel sorry for women who have that attitude because it's really a reflection on them. It really is. I, I'm all about live and let live. So when I come across somebody who's not, 
it's really their issue. It's not my issue. Yeah. So, you know, and again, it, when you're good spirited, you don't have that initial reaction when you see another woman looking good or being successful or yeah. being, you know, happy with themselves. You you think, oh, wow, look at this. Isn't this yeah. great? God bless. Exactly. That's a good spirited person. Mean spirited people, they tend to be the other way. And well, what's the they're... point of judging? I mean, what am I condemning? That you look awesome? Right, <laughs> right. I don't, I don't, you know, if I, w if I wanted that, then I would... I would quit what I'm doing right. and open a gym and train and eat right. and do all that stuff. But I'm stealing Halloween candy. So, <laughs> and it so, makes you happy. So, <laughs> so you know, yeah. to each his own. I would never look at another woman or man and think, oh, my gosh, what are you wearing? Never. Yeah. No, not everybody dresses like me. Most people don't. And I would never look down upon them because of it. Yeah. I would never. It just it's, it just doesn't, the thought doesn't even cross my mind. Yeah. I don't even think I can walk in six-inch stiletto heels. <laughs> well, I, mean, I know I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would just, I'd take my Uggs any day. And just, I'd just prefer to be in that. But but you look amazing in your six-inch stiletto heels. And God bless you. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Last time around, Linda, talk about your website and what, what's the best social media for people, your fans, and people who don't know you to contact you on. Uh, I would say the best place to contact me, honestly, is probably email. Uh, you know, social media, there are so many different, you know, direct messages and so forth. And it's very hard uh, for me to get to all of the messages that I get. Uh, I have, you know, I don't even know how many followers on each of the platforms. But when I have people leave comments on Facebook, I'm able to get to them because I, I go on periodically. Twitter also, I'm able to, you know, if they if they comment. You're on, hot on, on Twitter. Public, yeah, if they comment on the public platform. But if they private message me, it's very difficult for me right. to get to all of them. So, uh, but if they have something specific they need to talk to me about or ask me about, email is probably the best. Uh, my email is Linda Steele hot bod at gmail dot com and um but you know my website has i have a, a exclusive section on my website that has some pictures that haven't been out on social media right and i've already mentioned my my website yep. linda steel com uh so yeah i would say i would say you know via email if you have some specific personal questions that you need to ask zoriana coming up before you leave what's happening uh, well, I think I'll be emailing you to ask advice about uh, walking in stiletto heels when that day comes for me, <laughs> because I'm sure there'll be an event where that will be required. Yes, so yes. I thank you for your email. Of course, of <laughs> course, anytime. Um, if anyone wants to learn more about Sea Shepherd, uh, support us, donate. We've got a lot of campaigns to um, to conserve the ocean, and it's important for for everyone to be involved, for future generations, for current generations, just go to seashepherd.org. We also have a donate button on there. Um, you can do recurring monthly donations, you can do a one-time donation, or you can go to our e-store. We've got some fantastic gear and the, the proceeds go to our organization as well. Uh, you mentioned a website? www.seashepherd.org. And I want to thank everybody for coming, obviously. Thank those people who tune in to us weekly. Uh, I want to thank the restroom kit because I'm going to have them donate at least 100 of these to you guys for Sea Shepherd so you can put them on the ships and everything, which will be good. Yeah. Um, also, thank you for Provincial Vodka. Thank you for getting them into Gelson's now, which is great. And I look forward to seeing everybody pretty soon. And don't forget to go to the movies. If you see someone around a smile, please give them one of yours. And don't forget to subscribe to www.youtube.com forward slash movie reviews, the letter and more. Movie reviews and more. And we will see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're listening to Movie Reviews and More with Brian Sebastian, only on LA Talk Radio.